Good morning. Welcome back into Wake Up America. I'm Rob Finnerty. So we are officially 136 days away from the Iowa caucuses. Uh, GOP field starting to take shape. One dropout this week, Francis Suarez. 12 still in the race. We are 27 days away from debate number two. Donald Trump still the front runner. Joining us now for more, former advisor to Presidents George W. Bush and Senator John McCain, who of course ran for president and got the Republican nomination in 2008 and co-creator and co-host of the Circus, Mark McKinnon. Uh, it is great to have you on this morning, Mark. Good to see you. Good morning, Rob. Glad to be aboard. Thanks. Uh, so I want to talk about your article in Vanity Fair this week. Uh, Nikki Haley, is she the Republicans' last best hope? You say increasingly it seems like Nikki Haley may be the only sane, rational Republican left with any kind of chance to beat Donald Trump in the primaries and caucuses. Yes, Haley's Comet could be a moonshot, but she could turn out to be the GOP's last best hope. Now, we knew there was going to be an anti-Trump candidate. A lot of people thought it might be Ron DeSantis. Maybe not. We've been waiting for it. Is Nikki Haley the anti-Trump candidate? Well, I, as I said, I think she's the best hope for Republicans. I, I think Donald Trump has, uh, just with the legal baggage and everything else, that he's got problems in the general election. I know he's very strong in the primary but I think that he would not be the best nominee for Republicans. And it appears at this point, Ron DeSantis was supposed to be the, uh, you know, the, 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 the David to Trump's Goliath, and he's faded and doesn't appear to be uh, getting much traction. Um, and neither did any of the others, except for Nikki Haley. I thought she had an outstanding uh, performance of the debate. I think she's got the kind of background and experience as a former executive governor. Uh, very successful in South Carolina as a former United Nations ambassador. She has broad uh, foreign policy experience. And I thought she was great at the debate. And she told some hard truths. I mean, leadership is about telling hard truths. Right. And she told the hard truth that Donald Trump can't win a general election. And she told the hard truth about Republicans and spending, which I thought was, was uh, admirable. She picked up five points in post-debate polling. She's now at, at 7%, which is not a lot given where we are right now heading into the fall. Do you see other candidates, not Nikki Haley, but we saw Francis Suarez drop out earlier this week. Do you see other candidates dropping out before we get to debate number two? Uh, I think it's likely, you know, they're they're starting to run out of gas. Suarez is out. I mean, I think Doug Burgum and Asa Hutchison uh, didn't have great performances of the debate, so it's unlikely they're going to get much yeah. additional funding for their campaign. So, yeah, I expect to see the field start to start to trim down. OK, so the the basically the prevailing um, notion in Washington is that we're looking at another rematch of, of Biden and Donald Trump. Do you think that Joe Biden is the Democratic nominee in 2024, or are they going to try to force him out somehow, or does he step down, something like that, something happens, you know, with his it's, health? Yeah. It's amazing to me that, that Joe Biden would be the nominee. He is by far the weakest uh, of any Democrat who would run. 77% um, of the country doesn't think he should be running. Uh, and And any other Democrat would be much stronger than Joe Biden. So... I, I think that there's a lot of quiet desperation in the Democratic ranks. I mean, nobody wants to step up and and say the the ugly truth out loud about an incumbent president. Yeah. But the fact is that 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 you know a large percentage, a huge majority of the country, including Democrats, don't want him to run again. He's too old. Mark, I uh, I, I actually ran into and literally ran into George W. Bush at uh, St. Anne's Church up in Kenny Bunkport earlier this summer. Let's say somehow Donald Trump is the nominee. Could you could you see a, a reconciliation between W and and former President Donald Trump? You know, one thing that I've always tried to do, Rob, is not speak for President Bush. Uh, you know, it's just kind of our honor code that right. we let him speak for himself. So I'm going to pass on that one. That's Thanks. that's probably a good decision, given where we are. Um, great to have you on, Mark. Hope we can do it again soon. A whole lot to discuss hey, as we head into the fall. Kick Thank it you. hard. Mark McKinnon joining us this morning. Thank you.